Welcome to Tabernacle Times, brought to you by the Tabernacle of David Assembly of God, City Church. Now, on the subject of depression, of course, I have received a lot of feedback, not just from members, but from people that watch us online, and, and this thing seems, seems to cut across, because some of the places I've listened to, um, I've received phone calls from, is from pastors uh, who are appreciating that this subject has been handled, and um, realizing the fact that we are all candidates. So our subject was depression. And the theme was dealing with depression. The title was, We All Are Candidates. In other words, at any time, all of us may enter into that phase of depression. Now, it's a very, very long sermon that can't finish even this Sunday. We had Deuteronomy 28, verse 65 to 68, which was uh, our main text. And we said out of this text, we're not doing an expository uh, in, in order to get a key word and study that and present it, but we're doing a textual sermon where we're looking at a lesson learned from the passage of Scripture, which is giving a depressing, a depressing picture whereby Israel, uh, God tells them to say, I'll send you into depression if you not take care of uh, the commands I have given you, to a point that ships will come to carry you back to Egypt, where I said you'll never return there again, but they'll take you back there as slaves, but even when you go there, no one will be willing to buy you. So we say that picture was portraying depression as it were. Then we looked at uh, the top symptoms of depression. We they say the present feeling of sadness or irritability, decreased interest or enjoyment in activities, decreased or increased appetite, decreased interest uh, or enjoyment in a, a, a abnormal sleep pattern requiring more sleep or sometimes conversely unable to sleep. We looked also at restlessness or lethargy observed by others, feeling of persistent fatigue, feeling of weak, uh, worthlessness, excessive or inappropriate guilt, decreased ability to concentrate and thoughts of self-harm. And we say this is why it leads to people ha harming themselves where someone commits suicide. And I said of the least re recent trains in our country where we are seeing people committing suicide and the like is because others may not have been treated well. And we also spoke about the lack of um, uh, many people who are trained in order to handle certain cases that bring about trauma. For example, a person who could have been doing very well business-wise and then when they have a sudden collapse a sudden collapse of that business. They were used to a certain lifestyle, including their whole family, as it were. When they lose that, maybe because of economic situation, or maybe things like what happened during Meridian BIO. I mean, if you remember that time? Meridian Bank? Yes, that saga. Whereby people lost their monies, as it were. And then businesses went under. You find that it's very easy for one to go into some depression. And if they don't have um, therapeutic methods of coming out of that, it can lead into uh, higher levels of depression. And so we say that uh, even accidents when they take place, like we just lost uh, uh, those members of the apostolic, new apostolic church who died and others are taken into a hospital. The survivors are under trauma because their friends have gone, themselves were almost going. In other countries, quickly they'll whisk them to trauma therapists who will help them to pass through the trauma so they are properly counseled. Even when there's a bereavement, someone has lost a child, lost a husband or lost a wife, you find that in other places there are therapeutic people who will go there to handle uh, trauma therapy so that they are quickly helped to settle down properly in a uh, systematic manner because the brain must be coached to, to think in a certain manner for it to make a person live well. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. So we become what we think about. So if trauma is not handled, it affects the thinking pattern of a person. Consequently, they become depressed. So we say these things were important, though we are lacking them because of our environment, as it were, but they were very 
very necessary things. And we also say that uh, le, uh, I defended Chinama Hospital a little bit. I say, let us not fear when we hear that someone went to Chinama and start to label them. Or one day, if you hear that Bishop has gone to Chinama because he's being persecuted for doing nothing wrong, and then he, 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 he goes into depression. Now, because he, he, he's been preaching this and he recognizes that I'm depressed, so he goes to a doctor at Chinama. Don't simply say, I'm watching for a message here, Bishop Lelo. At the yeah, you know, ah, we, he, from the time I went to Chinama, just because you hate Chinama about me. No, I said, don't demonize Chinama. Okay, it is also medicine, just like someone who's attending to you when you have malaria, or someone who's attending to you when you are diabetic, as it were. So let us not stigmatize it. So I said four things about the, this, the, that mental hospital. I said, do not demonize Chinama. Number two, do not avoid Chinama. Number three, visit Chinama if you sense depression. Number four, it's as good a medical facility as UTH. Then we went on saying depression is a common and serious disorder. Every year, depression affects maybe about 10% of adult, Amer uh, adult um, uh, Africans and adult Asians. Japan had, uh, has uh, more uh, suicidal cases. And the reason for that is that um, a, the cultural setting uh, is, a, is a setting of performance. It's a setting of performance. In other ways, that um, uh, some of the books I was reading, I'm, 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 not, I'm not so sure how authentic they are, but maybe some of you could be familiar with it, that in Japan, when someone senses that he's getting lazy at a company, he's not uh, working as zealous as he used to be, he reports himself. <laughs> when a man is feeling lazy, can he report himself? No, he'll just find ways of resting. That's so even absconding from work. But Japanese will report themselves to say, I have lost the zeal for work. So I need a catalyst to make me work harder. And then also they are performance oriented when someone fails to attain what they wanted. They feel so ostracized. They feel so bad about themselves. And so that's why suicide is quite common in the area. But I think the main reason still behind that is depression which would come upon them. We also in Zambia here have had situations of people killing themselves. And this is largely people above the age of 18. Depression takes a big toll in suffering and can lead to suicide in several in severe cases. We said family, friends, health, work, work, or at school, all these things can be there. A person who is depressed because the teacher is not handling well, they will end up hating the subject which the teacher presents. How many of you uh, have that experience? Uh, I, when I was at uh, Kitwe, Kitwe Boys High School, uh, I almost hated chemistry. Because of the teacher who was handling that chemistry book, Mr. Kuti. Mr. Kuti, ah, no. Because Mr. Kuti, he, he, he would just give you a few formulas, and I liked, phys I liked physics and chemistry, really, I did. And I was a top student. But I began hating it the moment Mr. Kuti came, because if you just make a small mistake in the formula, he comes, he says, hold here. That's what he knew, hold here. You know, those days it was corporal punishment. So you hold on the bench, and he whips you. Um, so, uh, I will be in class, as soon as Mr. Mr. Kuti enters, I'll be depressed. Because you come and announce, you simply say, you, what did we learn yesterday? Come and write the chemical formula. We just learned yesterday, we haven't mastered it, and then you say, come and write. And you fail, you say, hold here. So, as a result, a number of us students, we began getting depressed with Mr. Kuti. Until we told Mr. Samuel, the headmaster, to say he was the wrong teacher for our class. But it can be depressing depending on the attitude of those who are handling people. And then we also looked further at uh, questions that surround uh, uh, depression and demonic influence. We said preachers sometimes we tend to make a mistake thinking that depression okay, is, can be caused by a demonic spirit. Yes, sometimes, but most of the cases are not demonic. They are due to depression. So it's not everything that you may want to say, let's pray for the person. No. Make, there's nothing wrong in making a reference to others who are specialized in a certain field. 
And we do have some Christian doctors, actually, who have referred patients to us by saying, we have tried every medical whatever, and we think very, that it's not a medical issue. This could be a demonic issue. And for sure, when you've gone to pray for such people, they've been delivered. So there's nothing wrong in making reference in a place where you cannot handle a matter. But by demonizing everything and saying it's a demon, and then you start setting even some olive oil, you even give the olive oils names and so forth, that is not true. We need to sober up and be sober when, when, when leading people. So, yes, I do admit that some cases can be demonic, but a majority of them are not demonic. They are to do with a mind. To do with a mind. Haven't you wondered that most of these deliverance churches are in the lower community areas? Yes, it's because people are inflicted by economic problems and they are looking for answers. So then they take capital of that. Am I, am I one who comes, you know, your mother from the village, he cast a spell on you. The time you came to Jesus Christ, that spell is null and void. Are you getting what I'm saying? We want to reduce the efficacy of the cross of Jesus Christ. Whom the Son sets free, they shall be free indeed. That's a statement of the word of God. But you know, these issues of teaching and so forth, and even the West Africa also comes in with their natural uh, religious deception, um, I mean, superstition of altars and shrines in Nigeria as well. So when they come and they'll say, you have a water spirit. There's a water spirit upon you. It has an altar. Listen, there's one altar which destroyed all altars when it was raised. And that water is Calvary. It took away of all our situations as it were. So we said we need to balance the two between spiritual as well as the physical. Then we said to recognize depression. In the, we said in the briefest uh, terms, here are the warning signs or symptoms or depre of depression as it were. So we looked at persistence and we looked at all those. So quickly and go now to what we said today we are going to, uh, we are going to handle today because it's too long so I will need to be fast today. We said symptoms of depression, we looked at them, and mania, we looked at those causes of depression, we looked at some of them, a few of them, we said some types of depression run in families, suggesting that a biological vulnerability can be inherited. A biological vulnerability can be inherited. This seems to be the case with bipolar disorder. Studies of families in which members of each generation develop bipolar disorder found that those with the illness have a somewhat different genetic makeup than those who do not get it. However, the reverse is, um, is, is, is not true. Not everybody with a genetic makeup that causes vulnerability to bipolar disorder will have the illness. Apparently, um, additional factors, uh, possibly stresses at home, work, or school are involved uh, in, in, in its onset. In some families, major depression also seems to occur generation after generation. However, it can also occur in people who have no family history of depression. Whether inherited or not, major depression disorder is often associated with changes in brain structures or brain function. People who have low self-esteem, who consistently view themselves and the world with pessimism, or who are really, uh, readily overwhelmed by stress are prone to depression. You know, there are people sometimes who just come and they'll tell you to say, um, I don't think I'm loved. And meanwhile, persons spoken to may have done everything out of their way, everything in the world. No normally, don't criticize. Look behind what's happening. It may just be that actually there is a situation in their lives that you must handle cautiously. And not necessarily the accusation that is coming. Because if you, if you major on the accusation, you will not see the need to assist. So you, 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 uh, you do that. I gave an example of that young lady who came, uh, who I said was uh, as pretty as a beauty contestant. But she believed that she was ugly. And when she came, even weeping and saying, Bishop, I'm hated in my family because I'm the ugliest. And in my mind, I'm saying, you, ugly. Ug ug ugliness means, you know. But after, after t teaching her the word of God and the like and so forth, it lifted her up. But maybe what I should have done is take her to a professional, 
therapist. They, of course, by prayer and by helping her, she got healed and went over it. Of course, she now has family and well married, as it were. But if there was no help given, those are people that would commit suicide. Meanwhile, it's just a little thing, a perception on account of how the environment where they grew up was. Researchers have shown that physical changes in the body can be accompanied by mental changes as well. Physical changes in the body can also be accompanied by mental changes as well. A person might change uh, in their mental fu functions if, for example, they get involved in an accident and then they are maimed. And out of that maiming, they can't do things that they once did. Out of the frustration and trauma of the accident and so forth, and maybe the public ridicule or shame or a feeling of public ridicule upon them can enter into that low esteem and then perpetually end up now having depression, which will bring a result of uh, a result in a person that is going to be negative, such things as uh, anger and all those things. So sometimes when things are happening, you tend to be above them by understanding to say it's not something that is uh, self-invented. It's coming out of a catalyst of things and events or accumulation of the same that happened in their lives. In recent years, um, researchers have shown that Physical changes, I've read this one already, uh, can be accompanied by mental changes. Med medical illness, such as a stroke, a heart attack, cancer, Parkinson's disease, and hormonal disorders can cause depressive illnesses, making the sick person apathetic and unwilling to care for his or her physical needs, thus prolonging the recovery period. I did also say that actually there are some people out of some disease, diseases because of the fluctuation of liquids in their body, they can also change. Such people are like diabetics. For example, a diabetic person when the sugar levels are low, even the image tends to change. They start to feel low. And if they don't know about that themselves to say what is making me feel this way is because of my condition, they may start operating below par. But when they come to know to say this also can cause such, that is not depression at all. I want to remove that. Those may have things like BP, and those may have things like deep, uh, uh, low, um, blood sugar levels and diabetes, as we call it, whether it be f uh, uh, type 1 or type 2. Uh, if you're not handled well, it can lead to depression. For example, type 1. You need to have insulin in your body all the time, and then you have to be moving with a box of insulin wherever you go. That can, if you don't handle it well, it can create depression because your friends are busy eating. You have to go first of all in the room and eat. You prick yourself. That's when now you go back to eat. You're almost like a robot after charging a battery, you know. And then those with type 2 also, you have to move with packets of uh, both sweets and medicine in your pocket. When it is low, you take sugar and sweets in your mouth. When it is high, you take the tablets. It can, if you don't handle it well, you can go into depression. But if you handle it well, it may not necessarily lead to depression. So all these things are quite critical. Let's look at depression in women. Women experience depression about twice as often as men. And today's Mother's Day, listen to me, mothers, the causes of depression in you. Many hormonal factors may contribute to the increased rate of depression in women, particularly such factors as menstrual cycle changes. That's why I speak to men. I tell them to say, when Paul speaks in Ephesians by saying, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. And he says, I speak of a mystery on this one. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. Therefore, should the husbands love their wives. Then for the husband, wife, he simply says, wives, obey your own husbands. And it ends there. But for a man, it is prolonged. A woman simply says, uh, has wives, love your own husbands. Of course, submit to him just like uh, the church submits to Christ. But for man says, I mean, so obey your own husbands. And then submit to them just like church submits to Christ. But for man, he says, love your own wife like Christ loved the church. Of this I speak of the ministry. Therefore, should a man love their own wives as Christ loved the church? Now, why is it saying as Christ loved the church? Haven't you noticed that the church changes sometimes from generation to generation? 
The church can be in a revival. And when there's a revival, there's happiness everywhere. There's rejoicing. Everywhere. Things are happening. The church is growing. There's a revival. But sometimes the churches go into a stale mode. Well, by the plateau, nothing is happening there. Discouragement comes in. Sometimes the church becomes monotonous. The interest to go to church starts to dissipate. All those things will happen. And then sometimes even devotion to Jesus may even be lowered at some point. And backsliding just become too much in the church. And then there's a revival. They all come back to revival and so forth. But does Jesus Christ change his attitude to the church? He doesn't. He is the same. He loved the church when it is low. He loved the church when it's in revival. He loved the church when there's excitement and new births are taking place. He loved the church in his changing circumstance. But himself doesn't change. Jesus Christ stands for man in marriage. And, as, and Jesus Christ understands the stages of the church and never changes. So men, when women are going through their cycle because of their hormonal activity by nature, not something they cause themselves, but something which nature gave them, they will be changing in attitude because of the moods. You find when they're about to flush, their mood changes. They're feeling irritable and things like that. And then when they're about to have ovulation, there's excitement because nature tells them to say, make it ready for him to fertilize the egg. So they're excited. Even when you have just bought a sweet candy, and all that excitement is in readiness. Am I speaking to someone this morning? And during the and, and the husband loves her and so forth because she's now fluffy. Even the appearance, the face changes. She's fluffy like a mango about to ripen. But it's nature which is telling her to say, appear like this, and so forth. And then at some times, because there's no fertilization and so forth, and she has to flush again, she changes. And then you're wondering, is this a sweet you like you? Why the changes? Because of hormonal activity. But the Bible is saying there in Ephesians that if you are man enough, you must match up with Jesus. Who loves her even in her changes? The church. So if you become also moody, I'll be shocked you, a man having moods. What hormone caused your moodiness? For her, I understand she has got hormones. You, you don't have to be moody. But there are some men, he wakes up today, he's not in a good mood. Which hormone? You have no excuse. <clears throat> So many women also face additional stresses such as responsibilities both at work and home, single parenthood and caring for children and for aging parents. In fact, in some surveys and some studies showed that in the case of severe premenstrual sun syndrome, PMS, women with a pre-existing pre vulnerability to PMS experience relief from mood and um, physical symptoms when their sex hormones were suppressed. And shortly after the hormones were reintroduced, they again developed symptoms of PMS. Women without a history of PMS reported no effects of the hormonal manipulation as it were. So many women are also particularly vulnerable after birth of a baby. The hormonal and physical changes as well as the, trade, uh, as the added responsibility of a new life can be, can, um, be factors that lead to post, uh, uh, postpartum depression in some women. Also, in our setting like here in Zambia, you find that some women may enter into depression and largely, largely, because our environment is too largely traditional, whereby a woman can go into Depression by way of a bullying husband, a non-loving husband, but they take advantage of a woman's vulnerability. What is a woman's vulnerability? Number one, it is what God did in the book of Genesis chapter, 30, chapter 3. When he said, you shall give birth in pain. To the man he simply said, the ground shall bring forth thistles and thorns, and it shall be harsh, and you shall find your food through sweat. But coming to the woman, you shall give birth through pain. And then secondly, another punishment. What was that? Your heart shall be to your husband. 
So on account of that, even if she's educated, even if she has got money, she will still sing that song by Aretha Franklin. Those who were in the 70s, if you remember. Every woman needs a man. Yes, it's true. Because thy heart shall be to your husband. So on account of that, she can be in an oppressive marriage. But for her to take a step to come out, you who have got sisters, now you understand why your sister, after you advising her several times, leave. Eh, okay, okay, I can leave, but okay. Your heart shall be to your husband. And then when she is brutal, beating her up and so on, she wants to leave, people from Mutendere called Alangiz, they also come, ah, nikulimba. That's why they have a higher level of depression than men. Because the very person to whom God made you vulnerable becomes the very catalyst of your depression. And you can't go away because you are bound by the declaration in the book of Genesis, your heart shall be to your husband. So that's why you are wondering, this lady is being brutalized by this bully. How come she's not going away? So that indication by itself, your heart shall be to your husband, makes her vulnerable and they still stay on. They become resilient and the man takes advantage of that. And let me tell you, you men, you will answer before God, you who are bullies. Because I know others, after I've pre preached here, when you go home, you say, <laughs> so if you don't want for bishop, we want to go to Mbaiwe. Don't take advantage. The Bible says you should consider the woman because she's a weaker vessel. Let me talk about weaker vessel here. The meaning of that word weaker vessel there does not mean weakness physically. Though some women, of course, uh, uh, yes, naturally, women uh, uh, don't, uh, have um, a consistent strength, but men have instant strength. We appear to be stronger in an instant as it were. But a, a woman can do a lot of labor, but she does it little by little, but cumulatively, she's very strong. She can do several things, but a man does it at once, whereby a woman can't do. Okay? But however, but that weaker vessel there is not referring to that. The weaker vessel is referring to is that uh, you should take care of her because God at the beginning made her vulnerable by making her subject to you. Are you getting it? So to whom are you answerable in taking care of your wife? You are, you are answerable to God because he's the one who's... A, could you imagine if God simply says, uh, your, your heart shall be to your husband and your husband's heart shall be to you? There would have been confusion. It's like what God has done in nature. Haven't you seen sometimes when you are looking for leaders, even in the nation, you find only very few stand up to be leaders? Do you know why? It's because God, to allow leadership to be possible, he made more cowards and few courageous people to make governance possible. Did you get what I said? He made more cowards of the people than courageous ones to make governance possible. Because if we were all courageous, we would have been butchering one another. So he made the many to be, hey, 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 on oh, only few, I can take it up. I can take, only few say I can take it up. That's why all the time, leadership, few come out. Because few are made courageous and many are made followers. Can you choose to be a leader or a follower? Okay, or some orientation may do that. Now, we look at, so this is the, how, why a woman suffers. Tradition also make her do that because parents who come, no, stay on in the marriage. Public ridicule will also be there. So she stays on in an abusive marriage. I'll be preaching soon on marriage, divorce, and remarriage. And I'll be talking about some of these things. One of the things I'm going to handle is, can a woman stay in an abusive marriage? Can a man stay in an abusive marriage? And if that man divorced, can he remarry? 
according to this preacher you're listening to here, if you're an abusive marriage, the man brutalizes you, leave him. And if, if Tuta finds you for marriage, I'll officiate. <laughs> All right. Many women are also particularly vulnerable after uh, we look at this for birth of babies. While transient blues are common in new mothers, and that's why we you women, you must organize yourselves. Do you know that some women, when they go into giving birth, not everyone has been prepared to face life. Other ladies, when they go into marriage, young ladies, they don't know how it's going to be. Sometimes even when she's carrying a pregnancy, she's tensed up not knowing how things are going to be. So that's why you find in churches, some churches, ministry by, young, by ladies to these young ladies and so forth, which is um, uh, fashioned after such young ladies, will be offered in order to make them settle down. And when a child is born, to avoid the trauma that comes in some cases, when a child is, give, is born, quickly they go to the mother and nature her and help her. You know, we make a visitation there with parcels, and then you tell her how to take care of the child. And this, she will ask questions, you are answering the questions, she settles quickly. So she, she may not need Chinama. She just need organized women who can handle her shortly after giving birth. All these things are therapeutic methods which we can, we can use to bring healing in the lives of a number of uh, people in our, in our environment. Treatment by a sympathetic physician and family's emotional support for the new mother are prime considerations in aiding her to recover her physical, mental well-being and her ability to care for and enjoy the infant. The help from the church becomes major and much more supreme than that of the family members because the church is a combination of people of various backgrounds who offer methods of healing to individuals who they are not related with but because they want to help on account of Christ. Therefore, a church must find its room to be effective in helping people who have been passing through these traumas, just like uh, ladies uh, in their depression. So we've looked at a number of things that affect a woman's depression. Societal judgment will be affecting them. Uh, when they give birth to a child and the hormonal activities in the body may bring all that. Disappointments and shocks may also be there. Abusive marriages and they still have to hang on because of the command of God, your hardship to your husband. All these things can be result, can bring depression. And in the case of being jilted, they can be depressed as well and so forth. Quickly, I'll look at uh, depression in men. Depression in men, although men are less likely to suffer from depression than women, there is a percentage of men affected by the illness in Zambia, just like our message is titled, it entails, we are all candidates. Men are less likely to admit to depression, and doctors are less likely to suspect it. We'll end on this statement. Less likely to suspect it. Next week, we'll look, finish uh, depression in men, Depression in, in old men and women above 70, and depression in children. May God bless you. Lord Jesus, we give you praise this morning. Lord, as we continue handling this most important of subjects, because our minds make us who we are. For your word says, as a man thinketh, so he is. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that even as we come to the close of this teaching, this coming week, I pray that your grace, O oh God, will continue to minister to us. Yes, Lord, we are not just spiritual because we are born again, but we are also physical and emotional. We are also very much intellectual beings. And so what happens in our intellectual state of mind will affect everything else in our lives. So we want to pray that you will help us as we go through this teaching. But adventure someone who will help someone or someone will be helped themselves to come out of depression or perhaps start to seek medical help in this regard. I ask, Lord, may you bless us now as we go various ways. So the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Because he has loved us with an everlasting love, and he has drawn us to himself with his loving kindness, so just lift up the name of the Lord this morning and tell him, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord, today. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. If you are blessed by this ministry, please write to us. Tabernacle of David Assembly of God, P.O. Box 32089, Lusaka, Zambia. Or email bishop at todassembly.com or email church at todassembly.com. You can also visit us at www.todassembly.com. 